In this part of the neurocomputers and deep learning course related to deep learning, you will learn general characteristics of the deep neural network called convolutional neural networks. In the previous chapter, you have learned training multilayer perceptron. Remember that in the multilayer perceptron, we have input layer and output layer. Between these two, we have hidden layers, and each layer is connected to the next layer in a fully connected manner. If we have, for example, K neurons here and M neurons in the next layer, then we will have K times M connections totally. In the classical pattern recognition, we have first future extraction step and then comes dimension reduction. After the dimensions of the futures are reduced, then the classification is applied there and we obtain the class label. If we consider future extraction, it requires expertise to decide on which futures to use. For dimension reduction, there is a problem called curse of dimensionality. Learning is harder if the dimension of the future vector is high. This is due to increasing the number of weights. If the number of weights are too large, that means that we have too many parameters and then the neural network to be used for classification memorizes the given data set instead of developing a generalization ability. Multilayer perceptron is widely used for classification step of the pattern recognition. It's a fully connected network and usually one or two hidden layers were used in the previous studies around 90s. They are called shallow networks. Now the question is that, is it possible to use fully connected networks instead of these future extraction and dimension reduction steps? In that case, it is called deep network and it is a fully connected deep neural network. But there are several problems if we increase the number of layers in a multilayer perceptron. So it cannot be used as a deep neural network in practice. Because we have problems which are, we are going to explain in the next slide. The problems with fully connected deep network, deep multilayer perceptron are as follows. Due to huge number of parameters, the network memorizes data trait instead of developing generalization ability. The question is, is it possible to reduce the number of parameters? The solution is convolutional neural networks, CNN, which is a deep neural network in which local connections and page sharing is used. This kind of connections are called filters in the convolutional neural network. To overcome the memorization problem, then it needs too many label samples. Now the question is, is it possible to apply unsupervised training? The solution is autoencoder and restricted Boltzmann machine, RBM. And also there are approaches which are called semi-supervised training, which makes it possible to train with small number of samples and then comes unsupervised self-learning. Another problem is that partial derivatives at lower layers during back propagation disappear. The question is, is it possible to train layers one by one? The solution is stacked autoencoder and deep RBM, deep restricted Boltzmann machine. They are trained layer by layer. In deep learning, we have deep neural networks. However, in the shallow nets, there is just a couple of layers. Multiple layers work to build an improved future space. For example, the first layer learns first order futures, for example, ages. The second layer learns higher order futures, combinations of first layer futures, for example, combination of ages, etc. 
and further layers learn more complex features. For example, it may learn faces in the face recognition example. But instead of three layers, this kind of features may be obtained in several layers. Deep learning is usually best when input space is locally structured, spatially or temporally. So images, languages, etc. versus arbitrary input features are advantages. Convolutional neural networks, in fact, was proposed by Fukushima in 1980s as neocognitron. Lucan in 1998 proposed convolutional neural networks having similarities to neocognitron. The common characteristics of the convolutional neural networks are CNN is a special kind of multilayer neural networks. It implicitly extracts relevant features. It's a feedforward network that can extract topological properties from a structured data, for example, from image. Like almost every other neural network, CNNs are trained with a version of the backpropagation algorithm. ComNet was the convolutional neural network proposed in 1995 by Lucan and Bangio. It is a neural network with specialized connectivity structure. The structure is given here. At the input, a tensor is applied. It's a high-dimensional vector. It may be three or four-dimensional, etc. It may be an image, video, etc. First, convolutional filters are applied on the input. These filters are trained during the training of the convolutional neural network. On the results of the convolutional filters, a nonlinearity is applied. After that, we have pooling and optionally, there may be normalization. This part is called the convolution layer. The second part is called subsaflic layer. After these steps are applied, we obtain future maps as output. These are again tensors. And several convolution subsampling layers are applied in the convolutional neural network. In complex layer terminology, all these layers is called a single convolutional layer. So in summary, it's a feedforward network. It convolve input, that means apply filter. Apply nonlinearity, usually rectified linear unit is used as nonlinearity. And then we have pooling, which is to find local maximum. Convolutional filters are trained by backpropagating error as in the backpropagation algorithm. In this figure, an example of the convolutional neural network is given. The input is a three-channel image having size 64 by 64, and this tree represents RGB channels of the image. This is a three-dimensional data, and it is called tensor. Convolution and pooling layers may be repeated many times. Pooling may be omitted for some layers. Here is the first convolution layer. It is obtained by applying 16 filters of size 3 by 3 by 3. Width and height of the filter can be determined freely. However, the depth should be equal to the depth of the previous layer. Because we have 16 filters, then we will obtain a future map having 16 layers. And the size of the input was 64 by 64. Here, zero padding is used to fill a round of the data with zero. So when applying the filter, the size of the future map remains the same. This is 64 by 64. So we obtain 64 by 64 in the convolution layer. And here, depth of the future maps is 16 since we have 16 filters. 
Max Pullin is applied with stride to, then the size of the map reduces to half. It was 64 by 64 in the convolutional layer. After pulling, it becomes 32 by 32. But the depth of the tensor here remains the same. All these are tensors in the convolutional neural network. After applying max pulling with stride 2, we obtain a max pulling layer of size 16 at 32 by 32. And again, on this one, convolution is applied. Here, there are 32 filters, and each is of size 3 by 3, and the depth is 16, because we have 16 layers here in this tensor. Again, zero padding is used. Because of that, we obtain 32 by 32. The size is the same, but depth is 32 because 32 filters are used. Again, we have max pooling with stride 2. In that case, the depth is the same, but width and height becomes 16 by 16. If we consider this number of elements, it corresponds to 8192 future components. And then, for the classification, fully connected layers are applied. At the end, for a better classification, softmax may be used. In this example, we will have two classes at the output. Because of that, a layer having two softmax elements are used. All these elements, convolution pooling and also, softmax will be explained later. In convolutional neural networks, for the convolution layers, local connectivity and weight sharing is used. If we consider fully connected multilayer perceptron, we have connection between each neuron in the previous layer and next layer. Here we have n neurons in the previous layer and m neurons in the next layer. That means that we have totally n times m connections. This structure is called fully connection. In the local connection, instead of being connected to all the neurons in the previous layer, there is connections only from the neurons which are in a local region related to the neuron for which we are considering the connections. In this example, each neuron in the next layer is connected to three neurons in the previous layer in the same local region. In the fully connected network, connection weights are different for each connection. It is also same for the locally connected network. These connection weights are different than the connections of the other neurons. However, if we consider local connections and shared weights, in this case, we have local connections and the weights of these local connections are shared. If the weights are shared, that means that the connection weights are the same for the neurons considering the position of the neurons in the previous layer. Here, the weights having the same color have the same value. All connections shown by red have the same weight and similarly all the connections having blue color have the same weight and similarly for the connections having green color. This local connections having the same weight is called filters. Convolution layer in Siena uses filters that is locally connected and shared weight structure resulting in a much smaller number of parameters that is, weight values due to local connection and weight sharing in filters. If we compare fully connected, here we have n times m weights, so this number of parameters. In this one, because only three connections from the previous layer, we have three times m connections. And here, 
for this local connection and shared weight, we have only three different weights, so we have three different parameters. Locally connected shared weights results in translation equivariance. That is, if you shift input M units, output shifts accordingly.